the wind howled like a banshee, clawing at the flimsy fabric of my tent. It was a relentless assault, a constant reminder of the desolate, unforgiving landscape surrounding us. We were five souls trapped in a frozen hell, our only solace, the flickering light of a kerosene lamp and the shared warmth of each other's bodies. Outside, the world was a monochrome nightmare. Endless plains of white stretched as far as the eye could see, broken only by the occasional jagged peak of a glacier. The sun, a pale disk in the sky, offered no warmth, its feeble rays swallowed by the icy embrace of the Arctic. We were there for a reason, of course. We were part of a research expedition tasked with studying the effects of climate change on this fragile ecosystem. We were scientists, explorers, and fools, driven by an insatiable curiosity and a naive belief that we could make a difference. Our base camp, a prefabricated shack perched precariously on the edge of a frozen lake, was our haven. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of stale sweat, diesel fumes, and fear. Every creak of the shack, every groan of the wind outside, sent shivers down my spine. One day, while exploring the lake's frozen surface, our instruments picked up an anomaly, a strange metallic object buried deep within the ice. It was a perfect sphere, its surface etched with intricate symbols that defied comprehension. It was as if it had fallen from another world, a silent harbinger of secrets best left undisturbed. Curiosity, the curse of our kind, overwhelmed our better judgment. We decided to excavate the sphere, to unlock its secrets and claim our place in the annals of scientific discovery. What fools we were. The excavation was long and arduous. The frozen ground yielded grudgingly to our picks and shovels. But finally, after days of labor, the sphere lay free, glistening like a malevolent eye in the pale sunlight. We transported it back to our base camp, our hearts pounding with anticipation. We were about to make history, to unravel a mystery that had been hidden for centuries. But our excitement was short-lived. As we carefully examined the sphere, the unthinkable happened. It began to glow, an eerie green light emanating from its depths. Before we could react, the sphere split open, revealing a creature unlike anything we had ever seen. It was humanoid in form, yet monstrous in its details. Its skin was a sickly gray, its eyes two burning embers. Sharp claws and teeth protruded from its contorted form, and tentacles writhed like serpents behind its back. Panic seized us. We were unprepared, our scientific instruments useless against this nightmare creature. It was a predator a primal force unleashed from its icy tomb. The creature attacked without warning. Its movements were impossibly fast, its strength inhuman. It was a whirlwind of claws and teeth, tearing into our flesh like a starved animal. In the ensuing chaos, four of my team members fell prey to the creature's savagery. Their screams echoed through the shack, a chilling symphony of fear and despair. One, however, met a different fate. He was infected, transformed by the creature's touch into a grotesque parody of his former self. I was the only one who escaped. I stumbled out of the shack, adrenaline coursing through my veins, the creature's guttural roars echoing behind me. I found refuge in a nearby cave, a hollowed out rock face that offered me scant protection from the elements but a temporary shield from the horror I had witnessed. For two weeks, I lived in that cave, a hunted animal in a desolate wasteland. I survived on snow and the occasional fish. My only companions, the ghosts of my fallen comrades and the chilling memories of the creature's attack. Then, one day, a miracle. A helicopter appeared in the sky, its blades whirring like a monstrous insect. I fired off a flare, a desperate plea for salvation. The helicopter responded, descending towards my icy prison. I was saved. I was brought back to civilization, a shell of the man I once was. But even now, as I write these words, the memory of that frozen hell haunts me.
I see the creature's eyes in my dreams, its claws reaching for me from the shadows. I know, with a chilling certainty, that it is not over. The creature is out there, waiting for its chance to unleash its terror upon the world. The helicopter had pulled me back from the brink. I was safe, or so I thought. The warmth of the cabin, the concerned faces of the rescue team, it all felt surreal. But beneath the surface, a cold dread gnawed at me. The memory of the creature's eyes, the feel of its claws tearing through the flesh of my comrades. It was a nightmare that refused to fade. I knew I had to tell someone, to warn them of the horror lurking beneath the ice. But who would believe me? My story sounded like the ravings of a madman, a tale spun from the fear and isolation of the frozen wilderness. Yet I couldn't stay silent. The creature was out there, and if I did nothing, it would continue its reign of terror. So I told them everything. The expedition, the discovery of the sphere, the creature's attack. The faces of the rescue team contorted in disbelief. They treated me like a specimen, a curious anomaly from the frozen wasteland. They took samples of my blood, ran tests, and poked and prodded me like a lab rat. But their skepticism didn't deter me. I knew what I had seen, what I had survived. I described the creature in detail, its grotesque features, its unearthly strength. I spoke of the way it moved, the guttural sounds it made, the chilling emptiness in its eyes. Slowly, their skepticism began to waver. The fear in my eyes, the raw terror in my voice, it spoke of a truth they couldn't ignore. They began to believe me. They decided to investigate further. A team of scientists and soldiers was assembled, armed with the latest technology and weapons. I volunteered to guide them, to lead them back to the frozen hell where my nightmare had begun. The journey back was even more harrowing than the first. The memories of the creature's attack haunted me every step of the way. I saw its eyes in the swirling snow, heard its claws scraping against the ice. Finally, we reached our base camp. It was a scene of utter devastation. The shack was in ruins, our equipment scattered and destroyed. The only evidence of my comrades was the bloodstains that stained the icy ground. A shiver ran down my spine. The creature had been here, and it knew we were coming. It was waiting for us, its eyes burning with an insatiable hunger. We proceeded cautiously, weapons drawn, scanning our surroundings for any sign of the creature. The air crackled with tension, the silence broken only by the crunch of our boots on the snow. Then we saw it, a hulking figure emerging from the shadows its eyes gleaming like two malevolent stars. The creature let out a guttural roar, a sound that sent shivers down our spines and froze our blood in our veins. The hunt had begun. The creature charged with a speed that belied its size. It was a whirlwind of claws and teeth, a monstrous embodiment of the Arctic's raw power. We fired our weapons, the bullets spitting fire and leaving trails of smoke in the freezing air, but they seemed to have little effect bouncing harmlessly off its thick, leathery hide. The creature struck our front line with devastating force. One soldier went down, his body ripped apart in a flurry of claws and teeth. Another was thrown across the ice, his screams echoing across the desolate landscape. Panic began to spread through our ranks. We were outmatched, outnumbered, and outgunned. This creature was not of this world. It was a force of nature unleashed from its icy prison. I fought back, fueled by a primal fear and a desperate desire to survive. I emptied my magazine, each shot sending a jolt of pain through my hand. But the creature seemed unstoppable, its eyes fixed on me with an unholy hunger. Just as it lunged for me, a voice ripped through the chaos. Grenades. Use the grenades. It was the leader of the expedition a seasoned veteran with eyes as cold and hard as the ice around us. He hurled a grenade, the metal sphere arcing through the air and landing at the creature's feet. The explosion was deafening, 
a blinding flash of light followed by a concussive boom that shook the very ground beneath our feet. When the smoke cleared, the creature lay sprawled on the ice, its body mangled and torn. A collective sigh of relief swept through our ranks. We had done it. We had defeated the monster. But our victory was short-lived. As we approached the creature, its body began to twitch. Its eyes snapped open, burning with an even more intense hatred. The creature let out a roar, a sound that seemed to rip the very fabric of reality. It rose from the ice, its body regenerating before our eyes. The wounds from the grenade were gone, replaced by smooth, glistening skin. It was stronger, now faster, more enraged. This was not over. The creature had just begun to play. We were trapped in a frozen hell, a predator's playground. We were surrounded by the endless white, the silence broken only by the creature's guttural roar and the desperate cries of my comrades. We fought back with the ferocity of cornered animals, firing blindly into the swirling snow, praying for a miracle. But it was a futile effort. The creature was relentless, a machine of death unstoppable in its pursuit of blood. One by one, my comrades fell. Their bodies littered the ice, frozen monuments to our folly. I was alone, the last survivor in this frozen slaughterhouse. The creature stood before me, its eyes boring into my soul. I knew it was the end. I had no hope of escape, no way to defeat this monstrous entity. I raised my gun to my head, the cold metal a comfort against the terror that gripped my heart. But then, a voice. A voice so familiar, yet so unexpected. It was my friend, the one who had been infected by the creature. He stood behind it, his eyes filled with a strange light. He raised his hand, a gesture that seemed to hold the creature back. Then he spoke. Don't do it, he said, his voice raspy and strained. You still have a chance. His words were like a lifeline thrown to a drowning man. I lowered my gun, a flicker of hope igniting in my chest. What did he mean? What chance did I have? He pointed towards the helicopter that had brought us here. It was hovering nearby, its blades spinning, a beacon of hope in the frozen wasteland. Go, he said. Get to the helicopter. I'll hold it off. I hesitated. I couldn't leave him, not after everything we had been through together. But his gaze was firm, his voice unwavering. You have to go, he repeated. This is your chance. Don't waste it. With tears streaming down my face, I turned and ran. I sprinted towards the helicopter, the cold biting at my exposed skin. I didn't dare look back, afraid that the sight of my friend's sacrifice would break me. I reached the helicopter, scrambled inside, and slammed the door shut. The pilot looked at me, his face a mask of concern. Take off, I screamed, my voice raw with emotion. Get me out of here. The helicopter lifted off the ground, the wind whipping my hair as we soared into the sky. I looked down at the scene below, the frozen wasteland where my comrades had. The helicopter soared higher, the desolate landscape of ice and snow shrinking beneath us. I watched numbly as the frozen battlefield where my comrades had fallen disappeared into the white expanse. In my ears echoed the chilling words of my friend, his sacrifice a heavy weight on my heart. I didn't know how long we flew, but it felt like an eternity. The world outside the helicopter was a bleak tapestry of white, broken only by the occasional jagged peak of a glacier. Inside, the atmosphere was tense, the silence broken only by the whirring of the blades and the occasional hushed whispers of the crew. They looked at me with a mixture of pity and fear, their faces reflecting the horrors I had witnessed and the chilling reality of the creature's existence. I felt like a ghost, a walking embodiment of the terror that lay dormant beneath the icy surface. I was the only survivor, the sole witness to the unimaginable carnage. The weight of the responsibility, 
the knowledge that my friend had sacrificed his life for mine was almost unbearable. As the hours passed, a strange sensation began to creep over me. It was a feeling of being watched, of being followed. I kept glancing over my shoulder, expecting to see the creature emerging from the clouds, its eyes burning with rage. The fear was constant, a gnawing ache in my gut. It kept me awake at night, haunted by nightmares of the creature's icy claws and my friend's lifeless eyes. The days blurred into weeks, each one a monotonous struggle to keep the memories at bay. I tried to distract myself, to focus on the task of reaching civilization and warning the world about the creature. But the fear was always there, a shadow lurking at the edge of my thoughts. It was a constant reminder of the fragility of life, the thin line that separated me from the fate of my comrades. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we saw it, a faint line on the horizon, a promise of land and safety. The sight of it brought tears to my eyes, a release from the tension that had gripped me for weeks. As we descended, the landscape transformed. The barren wasteland gave way to rolling hills and lush forests, a stark contrast to the frozen hell we had left behind. But even amidst the beauty, the fear lingered. We landed in a bustling city, a hive of activity that seemed a world away from the isolation of the Arctic. People rushed by, their faces etched with the worries of everyday life. They were oblivious to the horror that lurked beneath the surface of their world, the monstrous entity that threatened to unravel their reality. The authorities were informed of my story, but their reaction was one of skepticism. My tale of a creature from beyond the ice seemed like the ravings of a madman, a desperate attempt to cope with the trauma of my experience. They dismissed my warnings, attributing the deaths of my colleagues to an unfortunate accident. They refused to believe in the existence of the creature, content in their comfortable ignorance. But I knew the truth. I had seen the creature with my own eyes. I had felt its claws tear through the flesh of my comrades. And I knew that it would not rest until it had devoured them all. So I began to speak out. I went to the media, shared my story with the world. I warned them of the danger that lurked beneath the ice, the creature that threatened to unleash its terror upon the world. Many people dismissed me as a crackpot, a conspiracy theorist, but some listened. Some felt the truth in my words, the chilling echo of the terror I had witnessed. And so a movement began, a small group of people united by the belief in my story dedicated themselves to exposing the truth about the creature. We called ourselves the Guardians of the Arctic, and our mission was to warn the world and prepare for the coming threat. We studied the creature, researched its origins, and debated ways to stop it. We knew that it was only a matter of time before it broke free from its icy prison and unleashed its wrath upon the world. And so, we wait. We watch the skies for any sign of the creature's return. We prepare ourselves for the inevitable battle, knowing that the fate of humanity may rest on our shoulders. The world may not believe me yet, but they will. They will see the truth with their own eyes, and they will understand the terror that I have lived through. The weeks following my escape from the Arctic were a blur of interviews, press conferences, and public appearances. I became an unwilling celebrity thrust into the spotlight as the sole survivor of an unimaginable horror. My story, initially met with skepticism, began to gain traction. People were intrigued, drawn in by the chilling details of the creature and the desolate landscape of the Arctic. But the deeper they delved into my tale, the more doubts began to arise. Whispers of fabrication and exaggeration started circulating. News outlets questioned the legitimacy of my claims, highlighting the lack of physical evidence and the inconsistencies in my accounts. Some even accused me of being a publicity stunt, seeking fame and fortune by concocting a fantastical story. These accusations cut deep. The authorities, initially dismissive of my warnings, 
began to take notice of the growing public interest. They formed a special task force, tasked with investigating my claims and the creature's existence. I became their primary source of information, guiding them through the events that led to the tragedy. They analyzed my blood samples, searching for any trace of the creature's presence. They even ventured into the Arctic, retracing my steps and searching for the frozen base camp where my nightmare had begun. But their findings were inconclusive. They found no signs of the creature, no evidence of the battle, no bodies of my fallen comrades. The frozen landscape remained pristine, untouched by the horror I had described. Their skepticism only fueled the fire of doubt that already raged within me. Was I losing my mind? Had I somehow fabricated the entire ordeal? The creature a product of my own traumatized imagination? The pressure mounted. The public scrutiny, the constant questioning, it began to wear me down. I started questioning myself, doubting my own memories. Was I truly a survivor or just a delusional victim of the harsh Arctic environment? One night, I found myself staring at the reflection of my haunted eyes in the mirror. The fear, the pain, it was all etched onto my face like a macabre portrait. It was then that I realized something terrifying. The creature might not be physically present, but it had, had already begun its attack. It had invaded my mind, planted seeds of doubt and fear, slowly chipping away at my sanity. This realization filled me with a new resolve. I wouldn't let the creature win. I wouldn't allow it to consume me from within. I had to fight back, not just for myself, but for the future of humanity. I refocused my efforts, channeling my anger and fear into determination. I reached out to the fellow members of the Guardians of the Arctic, seeking their support and guidance. Together, we formed a united front determined to expose the truth and protect the world from the lurking threat. We continued our research, delving deeper into ancient myths and legends, searching for any information about the creature or its origins. We established a network of informants, spreading our message across the globe, raising awareness about the danger that lay dormant beneath the ice. We knew that the creature wouldn't remain hidden forever. Eventually, it would rise from its icy tomb, and we needed to be prepared. The fight was far from over. The seeds of doubt had been planted, and many remained skeptical. But we were unwavering in our resolve. We knew the truth, and we would not rest until the world believed us. The future was uncertain, shrouded in the shadows of fear and doubt. But we held on to hope, the flickering flame of defiance against the encroaching darkness. We were the guardians, the protectors, and we wouldn't let the world fall prey to an unseen horror. Chapter 6. Signs and Whispers The months that followed were a tireless pursuit of truth. We, the guardians of the Arctic, scoured the globe, following every lead, every whisper of the creature's presence. We delved into ancient texts and folklore, searching for clues about its origins and vulnerabilities. Our efforts were not in vain. We unearthed fragments of forgotten myths and legends, tales of a monstrous entity imprisoned beneath the ice, waiting for the day it would break free and engulf the world in darkness. These stories, though, often fantastical, resonated with our own experiences, lending credence to the existence of the creature. Our investigations also led us to unexpected allies, Scientists and researchers from various disciplines, intrigued by our claims, began collaborating with us. They brought their expertise, offering fresh perspectives and insights into the creature's nature and potential origins. One such collaboration was with a team of geologists studying the Arctic ice core samples. They discovered anomalies within the samples, traces of unknown elements that defied scientific explanation. These anomalies, they claimed, could be evidence of the creature's presence, a chilling confirmation of our suspicions. Another collaboration involved a group of astrophysicists studying cosmic anomalies. They discovered strange fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field, 
coinciding with sightings of unexplained lights and phenomena in the Arctic region. This, they theorized, could be a sign of the creature's growing influence, its attempt to manipulate the Earth's energies in preparation for its awakening. While these discoveries bolstered our resolve, they also served as grim reminders of the threat we faced. The creature was not a mere myth. It was a real, tangible entity. And it was growing stronger. Despite the mounting evidence, the general public remained skeptical. The seeds of doubt planted by the authorities still lingered, and many dismissed our warnings as the ramblings of madmen. The media, too, remained divided. Some outlets treated our claims with derision, while others sensationalized them, turning our plight into a spectacle. This only served to further discredit us in the eyes of the public. But we persevered. We knew that time was running out. The creature's awakening was inevitable, and we had to prepare the world for the coming darkness. We continued our outreach programs, educating communities about the potential threat and forming local chapters of the Guardians. We trained volunteers in survival skills, first aid, and emergency preparedness. We also established a global network of sensors and monitoring stations designed to detect any sign of the creature's activity. This network, while rudimentary, offered us a glimmer of hope, a chance to detect the threat before it was too late. Our efforts, though, met with resistance and doubt, slowly began to bear fruit. More people were becoming aware of the creature and its potential danger. Communities began to take the threat seriously, forming their own resistance groups and preparing for the worst. The world was still far from united, but a spark of awareness had been ignited. We, the guardians of the Arctic, had become the flame, flickering in the darkness, and we would continue to burn until the truth was revealed and the world was prepared for the coming storm. The fight was far from over. We were outnumbered, outmatched, and constantly doubted, but we had faith in our cause, in the truth of our experiences, and in the resilience of the human spirit. We knew that the fate of humanity rested on our shoulders, and we would not falter. The darkness was gathering, but so was the light. We were the guardians of the Arctic, and we would stand against the encroaching shadows, defending the world from an unseen horror. The years that followed were a blur of tireless vigilance and growing fear. The whispers about the creature had become a roar, echoing across the globe as reports of strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena multiplied. The creature's influence was undeniable. The once pristine Arctic landscape began to mutate, its frozen expanses contorted by unnatural growths and shimmering with an eerie luminescence. The ice itself seemed to groan and crackle, as if a monstrous entity stirred beneath its surface. The anomalies discovered in the ice cores became more frequent and pronounced, spreading beyond the Arctic and appearing in other parts of the world. These anomalies, now dubbed harbingers, were like tumors growing within the Earth, twisting and corrupting the natural world. The magnetic field fluctuations intensified, disrupting electronic communications and causing widespread chaos. Strange lights danced in the night sky while unsettling tremors shook the ground. These were not mere coincidences. They were a prelude, a terrifying symphony announcing the creature's imminent arrival. The Guardians of the Arctic, now a global network of thousands, became the frontline defenders against the encroaching darkness. We trained tirelessly, honing our skills and preparing for the inevitable confrontation. Our makeshift network of sensors and monitoring stations, though rudimentary, provided us with invaluable data, allowing us to track the creature's movements and warn communities of potential dangers. The public, once skeptical, was now gripped by fear. The undeniable evidence of the creature's existence and the growing chaos in the world had finally shattered their complacency. Panic buying and mass migrations became commonplace as people sought refuge in fortified shelters or fled to remote regions in a desperate attempt to escape the impending doom. Governments, 
Initially hesitant to believe our warnings, were forced to take action. They established military task forces and emergency response teams, but their efforts felt inadequate in the face of such an overwhelming threat. Amidst the chaos, the Guardians remained a beacon of hope. We provided support and guidance to communities, offering training and sharing our knowledge about the creature and its weaknesses. We also served as a symbol of defiance, a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of unimaginable horrors. Yet, even as we fought with unwavering determination, a gnawing fear began to creep into our hearts. The creature was growing stronger, its power escalating with each passing day. The harbingers spread like a plague, corrupting the earth and weakening the natural barriers that held the creature at bay. We knew that time was running out. The creature's final awakening loomed, and the fate of humanity hung in the balance. We, the guardians of the Arctic, were the last line of defense, and we would stand our ground until our very last breath. The battle wouldn't be fought on a single battlefield. It would be a global war against an unseen enemy. We would need all our strength, all our courage, and all our courage and all our ingenuity to survive. We would need to rely on each other, to trust our allies, and to never lose sight of the hope that flickered within our hearts. This was the fight for our future, the fight for our very existence. We were the guardians of the Arctic, and we would not falter. We would fight until the last flicker of light extinguished the encroaching darkness. Our story was far from over, and the next chapter would be written in blood, sweat, and tears. The final battle was approaching, and we, the Guardians, would stand as the last bastion of hope against the monstrous entity that threatened to consume the world. The world stood on the precipice. The creature's awakening had begun, a cataclysmic event that ripped through the fabric of reality. The Harbingers, now fully formed, erupted from the earth like malignant tumors, spewing forth an unholy darkness that choked the skies and filled the air with the stench of decay. The tremors intensified, evolving into earthquakes that shattered cities and swallowed entire landscapes. The once familiar landscapes, the once familiar landscape was now a grotesque parody of its former self, a canvas painted in shades of doom. Governments collapsed, their flimsy structures unable to withstand the onslaught of chaos. The military, overwhelmed and outmatched, retreated to fortified bunkers, leaving the fate of humanity in the hands of the Guardians. We, the last embers of hope in a dying world, stood scattered across the globe, each facing the encroaching darkness in our own way. Some of us fought alongside the remnants of the military, utilizing their weapons and resources to hold back the tide of darkness. Others ventured into the Harbingers, seeking to understand the creature's weaknesses and find a way to destroy it from within. Still others focused on protecting the innocent, guiding refugees to safe havens and providing them with the resources needed to survive the coming storm. We were a tapestry woven from diverse backgrounds and beliefs, united by a single purpose, to survive and protect the light in this world of encroaching darkness. The battles were brutal and unrelenting. We fought against creatures that defied comprehension, entities that were born of nightmares and fueled by the creature's own hatred. Our weapons, once symbols of human ingenuity, felt insignificant against the raw power of the darkness. We lost many comrades along the way. Friends, family, allies, all sacrificed their lives in the fight for humanity's future. Their deaths were not in vain, however. Each fallen guardian served as a reminder of the stakes, a testament to the courage that burned within our hearts. As the darkness spread, the lines between reality and nightmare blurred. Hallucinations became commonplace, preying on our deepest fears and anxieties. The whispers of the creature grew louder, infiltrating our minds and seeding doubt and despair. But we persevered. We drew strength from the memories of those we lost, from the resilience of the human spirit, and from the unwavering hope that flickered within our hearts. We knew that even in the darkest of nights, the sun would rise again. 
The final battle was approaching, a clash of titans that would determine the fate of humanity. We, the guardians of the Arctic, would stand as the last bastion of light against the encroaching darkness. We knew that we might not survive, but we were prepared to die trying. This was the culmination of our struggle, the final chapter in a story written in blood, sweat, and tears. We were the guardians of the Arctic, and this was our last stand. We would fight with every ounce of our being, channeling the strength of all those who had fallen and unleashing our fury against the creature that threatened to consume our world. The fate of humanity hung in the balance, and we, the Guardians, were its last line of defense. We would stand tall, we would fight valiantly, and we would write our names in the annals of history as the heroes who saved the world from the clutches of an unimaginable horror. The final battle was upon us. The earth trembled beneath our feet, the sky a canvas of swirling darkness and incandescent fire. The harbingers pulsed with malevolent energy, spewing forth creatures of nightmares and despair. We, the guardians of the Arctic, stood amidst the chaos, a ragged but resolute band facing an enemy that defied comprehension. We had come from all corners of the world, united by a single purpose, to protect our planet from the creature's insatiable hunger. We fought with the ferocity of cornered animals, channeling the grief of our fallen comrades and the unwavering hope for a future free from darkness. The battle raged for what felt like an eternity. We fought side by side, our weapons carving through the ranks of the creature's minions. We fell one by one, each sacrifice a testament to our unwavering courage. Yet for every guardian that fell, two more rose in their place fueled by the righteous fury ignited within our hearts. Slowly, ever so slowly, we began to push back the darkness. We identified the harbingers as the creature's weak points, the conduits through which its power flowed. With a coordinated strike, we unleashed our combined energy, tearing through the harbingers and severing the creature's connection to our world. A deafening shriek echoed across the battlefield, a sound that shook the very foundations of reality. The Harbingers, deprived of their power source, began to collapse, imploding upon themselves and spewing forth a torrent of dark energy. The creature, enraged and wounded, lashed out in a final, desperate act of defiance. It tore through the fabric of reality, creating a portal to its own dimension, a place where unimaginable horrors dwelled. We knew then that this was our chance. We gathered our remaining strength, channeling years of training and unwavering determination into a singular attack. With a collective roar that shook the heavens, we unleashed our fury, a torrent of light and energy that slammed into the creature with the force of a supernova. The creature screeched once more, a sound that ripped through our souls before being consumed by the light. The portal closed with a deafening bang, sealing the creature away within its own abyss. Silence descended upon the battlefield. The dust settled, revealing a landscape ravaged by the battle, yet bathed in the warm rays of the rising sun. We stood amidst the ruins, exhausted but victorious, the survivors of a battle that had determined the fate of humanity. The world was forever changed, the scars of the creature's invasion would remain, a stark reminder of the darkness we had faced. But the spirit of humanity remained unbroken. We had faced an unimaginable enemy and emerged victorious, our resilience and courage shining brighter than ever before. From the ashes of despair, a new world was born. We rebuilt our cities, restoring what was lost and nurturing hope for the future. We never forgot the sacrifices made by the Guardians their heroism etched in our hearts. We continued to stand watch, vigilant against any threat that might arise. We knew that the darkness might return, but we also knew that humanity was prepared. We were the guardians of the Arctic, and we would forever be ready to defend our world from the shadows. And so, the story of the guardians of the Arctic concludes.
It is a tale of courage, sacrifice, and the enduring power of the human spirit. It is a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, and that together we can overcome any obstacle. The battle may be won, but the fight is far from over. We will continue to stand watch, ever vigilant, forever prepared to defend the world from any threat that arises. For we are the guardians of the Arctic, and the legacy of our struggle will echo through the ages, a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.